Okay, so what are we doing here in these old workings? What's the purpose of what you did in this uh, after? We're at one of the older parts of the mine that we haven't been into in a couple decades. So before we're able to go in and work and make sure it's safe for the guys, um, we'll like to do an inspection with the drone. So in this particular spot here, we had an old stove below us that we had mined and then backfilled. And now we're looking to go in and sort of mine the material on the top of it. Um, so the goal here would be to fly the drone, just see if it's caved at all since we would have last inspected it, um, and make sure that there's no immediate hazards for guys to get in there and start to reestablish it as a working area. Okay, so it's going to be mainly a visual inspection, or are you going to use the point cloud to do something and compare it? Uh, so the visual inspection is definitely important. It tells us a lot of information, but we're also really interested in the point cloud uh, so that we can come up with a volume or mesh of what's actually open. So if the area is not safe enough for us to get back in there um, and work directly, we can still mine the material, just taking a different approach, drilling the holes that we're going to load a little bit further back. So for that to be successful, the better understanding we have of the actual void space available will allow us to sort of engineer a better blast, have more success at actually recovering something. While we're working the area, um, you know, things are changing. We're getting access to different parts, moving some of the material around or com out completely. Um, so we're going to do periodic scans here um, until we kind of have a defined path forward. Once we know for sure, okay, this is how we're going to attack the stove, um, then we'll wait, drill the holes, blast it, and then once we start to get into blasting it, we'll come back in and see how well we're doing periodically. So between blast one and two, we'll take scans, see how the stove's progressing. If we've got to change something, we can make adjustments. Flying into old workings is a little bit different than just a normal stove scan. Um, where we have some idea of what we might be expecting. Uh, so when we fly in old workings, obviously it's just a small tunnel. A lot of the times it's got a lot of material and stuff left in it. Um, but the big, big hazard for us and for the drone is uh, where the screen's corroded, maybe it's getting in the way or some of the rocks have fallen. Um, you sort of need to navigate your path through it a bit more carefully, take your time, you know, understand how the drone interacts with the environment because um, you're a lot more intimate in sort of your flying setting. The three most significant risks when flying an old working are the following ones. The first is water accumulation, which may occur in some areas and could also be dripping, sometimes heavily. Always try to fly around waterfalls rather than underneath them. Over an accumulation of water, aim to maintain at least 40 centimeters or one foot of free space between the drone and the water. The second risk is dust and debris accumulation on the floor. Old workings can be extremely dusty and may have old plastic debris lying around. Dust can limit your visibility, but turning off close-up lights and flying as high as possible can help mitigate this. This practice also reduces the risk of plastic debris being sucked into your propellers. The third important risk involves protruding objects, such as rebar or mesh, that has loosened over time. The only way to avoid these is by always flying forward with the camera aimed in the direction of flight. When approaching the ceiling, tilting the camera upward by a few degrees will help you spot potential dangers. In some cases, old workings may also contain residual explosive gases. Always follow safety rules and consider using the gas detector payload on the drone. This will ensure that you receive real-time information about the presence of gases around the drone. As we want to map and compare each scan over time, the best way would be to use reflective targets to do automatic alignments in Faro Connect. For this, we will need a minimum of four large reflective targets that we will scan at the beginning and end of each flight. The best practice would be to drill the target support into the wall to make sure they are exactly at the same position for each scan. After completing the flight, import the data into Inspector and process it using Faro Connect. After the initial processing, run the alignment workflow if multiple flights have been conducted in the area. Load the bag file, the JSON file, and select the tunnel captured environment. If later you want to geo-reference the models, you can always get the coordinates of the reflective targets and run the geo-referencing workflow. To visually compare changes between models, a simple method is to color the point clouds. So there's the new shape design we've come up with after we got the scan. So 
Now we're going to drill all of our holes out of here, out of this axis, um, sort of just fanning into it, kicking it down. Um, so this is sort of a good example of going to an old area with the drone, place would have been kind of, you know, never would have been able to access before, or would have taken us kind of weeks of work to get back in there. Um, but we were able to fly that, you know, months ahead, just a lot cheaper, quick drone flight, gives us all the information we need, change our design, come up with a better plan, now we'll move forward with that. Keep in mind that every old workings inspection is different and requires thorough preparation. Risks can change over time. So flight preparation is always a key aspect of a successful inspection. We hope you found this video informative and helpful for your future inspections. If you have any questions or need further guidance, please don't hesitate to reach out to the Flyability Training Team.